check out this beauty. Giants. Never heard of it. Backpack blower. What do we got? 30 cc's, one kilowatt. Wow, it's a raging machine, this. Um, this was a side of the road. Actually, tell a lie, it was Facebook uh, in my local area. It was just put on. Whoever wants it, come and grab it. Um, they weren't sure of the working condition, which, I mean, looking at it, I'd say it's probably not working. Feel free to comment if you think it is. It could be interesting little, interesting little chat. Um, so, I don't know anything about this, which is always a lot of fun. One thing I can tell you is there's meant to be a cover and a filter there. Um, so yeah, picked it up, threw it in the back of the ute, um, brought it back here and think we'll get stuck into this one today. They are handy, these backpack blowers. Um, just a bit more bit more um, air displacement than your standard blower, but we'll see how we go. Um, give it a bit of a clean up first. We'll see if it's got compression in the standard, standard rigmarole. Uh, and then we will go from there. Let's get stuck into it. Let's just check to see if it's got... The compression could be onto something good here. Um, I'm just going to rip that plug out, see what that looks like. Uh, might put a bit of two-stroke oil down in there just for a bit of lubrication of the uh, lubrication of the bore, just while I'm trying to get it going. And then um, yeah, we'll check fuel pickup, fuel filter, a couple of things like that. Interesting for a Giants. I think Giants is like a um, like an Aldi supermarket brand, like a like a Home Depot kind of brand, which is interesting because it's running a Champion plug. Champion plugs are normally fairly high end. The plug looks okay. <laughs> Nothing too out of the ordinary there. I give it a bit of a bit of a clean up and focus. A bit of a clean up and uh, that should be good to go. One thing when cleaning plugs that I often see people miss um, on YouTube is um, they clean like I just did with the wire brush, but where your um, spark or your technically your arc is created, that gets gunged up in there. So it's always good to get up a little bit of sandpaper or in this case, I've got um, abrasive um, tape and just give it a little bit of a, a bit of a clean. So I can see both those surfaces now if I get a the pointy pointer so the surface on underneath up under here is shiny and clean and the top of the the rod there is clean as well so that's good to go this is this is purely for good measure Turn the tilt goes up a bit just a tiny little bit doesn't need to be much just like that There's a tiny little bit of fuel in there. And there's a little bit of crap in the bottom, which you can sort of see. All right, let's fish out there. Oh, perfect. Doesn't look like. Okay, that fuel line has doesn't have a filter on the end of it, which is not good. I can see that now. And also it is rock solid which is not ideal 
even up here. It's hard. Might leave that before breaking it. We'll see if it runs before we go down the path of ripping that out and changing it over. The fuel filter is not ideal. It's not there, but hey, such is life. Just gonna hit this with a bit of carbine and throw the body cleaner. Just get as much of that crap out of there as we can before we try and start doing starting sort of things. Should come up alright after a bit of a clean this thing. Just don't know how much luck I'll have finding a new case for that. Alright, so while we're working on the carby, I just went to squeeze the throttle. No love, and there is a button on the side of it which just feels very chunky. It is moving, but I might just I don't want to risk breaking that cable because that'll just mean this is a bin job. So I'll just spray a bit of stuff on that and try and free that up a little bit. Take this tape off here as well. People have got to do that, like, don't be lazy, just push the button. You know what I mean? Like, what's the matter? Bit of brake clean. Clean that right up. Look at that. Beautiful. Better. Not amazing, but better. Put a little bit of silicon spray in there. You guys can see the lights are amazing. On here, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil. Much better. I just sprayed a bit of carburetor cleaner in there. I drained out the fuel was like honey. So it's better now. Hopefully there's not too much of that kicking around in the fuel system. Alright, put a bit of fresh two-stroke in and we'll see how we go. This lid. That's a kind of if you can see that, that's what was in the fuel tank. That's very stale fuel. Very bad. Alright, I'll clean up this lid and uh, get back to it. I've only been doing that for 30 years. Round about. Anyway, whatever. Go, a bit of fuel. Alright, let's see if this bad boy. It'll probably, that vent line that's there, well that return line, it'll probably slop out of that. I might have to put 
see when I what I'll do is I'll move the camera so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But hopefully you can see. So you can see we've got two lines here. This is the um, suction line coming up into the bottom of the carburetor. And there's another line, if I move that choke lever out the way, this one here, this is the return. And there's another hole in the top of the tank. And what happens is when you when you um, prime fuel, you'll probably see here in a second, once the carb is full, see that? It starts to squirt it back again. So it just allows for recirculation of the carburetor. I need to put a bit of fuel line back onto there, otherwise I'll end up with fuel going everywhere. So let's just do that now. Hopefully I've got a bit small enough. Um, and then we can start this up. So when you're trying to feed through fuel line, a really good trick is you cut the fuel line like that. That way, as you can see, it's pointy. But what that enables you to do is, is to poke it through the hole with the point first, rather than trying to squeeze the whole lot through. That's basically enabled me to slide that straight through. Get your shot in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see. I mean, let me just unhook you guys. I've got all sorts of licorice happening here. As you can see, the Fluoro tubes come through. It was easy for me to slide it and I'll just trim that now and hook it up to that little brass elbow coming down. I'm just going to do up this lid first so I don't lose too much fuel given the price of fuel at the moment. Very expensive. But I'll just see if I can hold this. Let me hold this and give you guys a better view of sort of what I'm doing. Because the lighting's not great in here at the minute. That's all right. So see, this is what I want to hook up to. So if I go, okay, I roughly want to be, oh, it's about there. So I'll pull this out a little bit. Like that. Now what we should see is when I pump the primer bulb, Look at that, it's working as it should. Love it. Right, let's give her a few rips potato chip and see what she does. Anyone knows what might be happening here please feel free to pause the film at this time mark and put it in the comments but what I think's happening is I've just put a touch too much two-stroke oil in there it's probably fouled in the plug so I'll pull it out and we'll have a look yeah. don't know if you'll be able to see it or not get it to focus but that is covered in two stroke oil all right so pretty basic i just put some carby cleaner um and throttle body cleaner down in top of the piston there it was a layer of oil on there still which it was two different colors of oil which would suggest that potentially there was um maybe some someone else has put something in there at some stage just to keep it lubricated i don't know i don't think they would but Anyway, it's gone now, and uh, we will try for starting round two.
plug just keeps fouling up. Citrep, as you just saw, it runs. But I just need someone walking next to me with the can of Aerostart, which is not ideal. So basically to this point, what I've been able to work out through process and elimination, as you've seen, is the fact that it does run, but it's not delivering its own fuel. So I've swapped the carburetors over. Um, now in fairness to this carburetor, I haven't cleaned it out, so it could be full of junk but I'm getting the same, um, I'm getting the same result with two different carburetors. So I'm gonna have a look inside this carburetor at the internals, see what it looks like. Um, if they look clean, fine and dandy, then I'll explain what my thoughts are on that when we discover that. Cause I think I know what might've happened to this blower. All right, so I went away and had a bit of a think about what's happening here and I want to rule out a couple of things and one of those things is I want to rule out fuel delivery. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook this up temporarily, fill this tube full of fuel that way it's purely gravity um, and see if, if that changes what's happening here. So let me get that set up now and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so I now have... Um, my tube full of fuel. I'm just going to try and suction a little bit of that fuel through. Huh. I've definitely got fuel coming into the carby now. So let me just assess what's happening in this fuel tank and we'll go from there.
So the reason that died, I think, was because I reckon my plug lead came off. Um, which I could always just give it a tug and see if it starts in, couldn't I? I think I can see that. So the plug lead was what killed it just then, but it's definitely running very high on the idle side of things. So Carby's definitely got some issues going on, but this is going to be salvageable. So, um, I think what I'll do is, is I'll strip this carby down and I will um, I will rebuild it because this will be pretty straightforward inside. I've had a few people ask in the comments for uh, a couple of carburetor rebuild videos so I might make one um, on this and um, also on the mower. I might do a video on a two-stroke um, carburetor and also a four-stroke carburetor, which will be that mower that I had the other day and you saw that little video. So this machine is a runner, that is for sure. So um, there's a little bit of a tidy up, but um, I'm gonna leave that for a carburetor video. So maybe the next video that we do uh, will be a carburetor video because I'll pull these off, this one and the other one, and I will throw them in the ultrasonic cleaner to kick that off. So pretty happy about that. So burning question why wouldn't it start that had me scratching my head but what i ended up doing was i ended up changing over the plug the engine that uh the donor engine that i took the carburetor off also ran the same plug so i changed the plugs over now i did check the plug for spark um, it had spark i did think to myself it looked a bit weak but the engine should have still started but as soon as i changed that plug over um first pull it started and it ran as you can hear it's obviously running um it's it's running very high um the throttle body itself is jammed a little bit open which is why it's running high um, but it sounds healthy the engine sounds healthy and it puts out a good uh good capacity of air so this is going to be a great little um great little blower so that'll be it for this portion of the video but stay tuned because the next video will be on rebuilding this carburetor two stroke when I say rebuild, breakdown, clean, explanation, could be maintenance, it could be rebuild. Um, take from it what you will, but it'll be, have the information that you need to be able to just see if you can work out what's wrong with your carburetor on both this two-stroke and that four-stroke mower over there. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you soon.